Sula. The novel begins when the construction of a golf course is announced, the site being the destroyed remnants of what used to be the bottom. The bottom is a black neighborhood on the hill above the fictional town of Medallion, Ohio. In the first section of the novel, the origin story of the bottom is revealed as well as how it got its name, a white farmer promised freedom and piece of bottom land to his slave if he would perform some difficult chores for him. Upon completion, the farmer regrets his end of the bargain. Freedom was easy, the farmer had no objection to that, but he did not want to give up the land. He tells the slave he was very sorry that he had to give him valley land, for he had hoped to give him a piece of the bottom land. The slave said he thought valley land was bottom land, to which the master said land on the hill, not the valley, was bottom land, rich and fertile. This is an obviously untrue, and slavery was never practiced in Ohio, but it is the story that black people told to illuminate the fact that white people's racism and lies have created this topsy-turvy world in which up is down and down is up. The white people lived on the rich valley floor. And the blacks populated the hills above it, taking small consolation in the fact that every day they could literally look down on the white folks. The story is organized by chronological chapters labeled with years. In 1919, the first named character, Handsome Shadrach, a previous resident of the bottom, returns from World War I a shattered man, suffering from shell shock or PTSD and unable to accept the world he used to belong in. Living in the outskirts of town and attempting to create order in his life, he develops methods such as keeping his shack in hospital-grade neatness. Another method is the invention of National Suicide Day, which exists on January 3rd to counter and compartmentalize the constant death he saw at war, and is essentially invitation for anyone that plans to die within the next year, to die on that day. Never assimilating, he curses even at children and whites, has regular acts of indecency, but also does odd jobs and sells fish to the townspeople and is begrudgingly woven into the urban fabric, which is this town's version of acceptance. In 1920 and 1921, the narrator contrasts the families of the children Nell Wright and Sula Peace, who both grow up with no father figure. Nell, the product of a mother knee-deep in social conventions, grows up in a stable home. Nell is initially torn between the rigid conventionality of her mother Helene Wright, who dislikes Sula's family instantly, and her inherent curiosity with the world, which she discovers on a trip. Her vow to venture out when she is older is juxtaposed by the reader being informed that not once did she leave the bottom after that trip. This experience ultimately prompts Nell to begin a friendship with Sula. The Peace family is the opposite. She lives with her grandmother Eva and her mother Hannah, both of whom are seen by the town as eccentric, loose, yet Hannah was genuinely loved by all men, and Eva was very respected by all women. Their house serves as a home for three informally adopted boys and a steady stream of boarders. The extremely strained relationship between Hannah and Eva is revealed. Despite their differences, Sula and Nell become fiercely attached to each other in adolescent friendship. They share every part of their lives. This includes a memory of an accidental traumatic event, one day, they playfully swing a neighborhood boy, Chicken Little, around by his hands. Sula loses her grip and he falls into a nearby river and drowns. They do not tell anyone of the event, and though Sula grieves with guilt, Nell feels a light happiness, which is implicitly revealed to be unspoken pride, because she has secretly decided that the event is Sula's fault and that she does not share the blame at all. What complicates things is Shadrach's shack, which has a direct view of the incident. To find out if he saw, Sula visits it alone and is surprised at its orderliness, but she is unable to ask the question through her tears. He comforts her and she runs away, accidentally leaving her belt which Shadrach hangs on his wall as a sole ornament and memorandum of his only visitor. One day, Hannah tries to light a fire outside and her dress catches fire. Eva sees this happening from upstairs and jumps out the window in an attempt to smother the flames to save her daughter's life. An ambulance comes, but Hannah dies en route to the hospital, and her mother is injured as well. 
The incident proves Eva's fierce love for her daughter despite previous tension. Sula, however, had stood on the porch and watched her mother burn. Other residents of the bottom suggest perhaps Sula was stunned by the incident, but Eva believes she stood and watched because she was interested. Nell chooses to marry, which implicitly breaks the bond of the girls who promise to share everything. Sula follows a wildly divergent path and lives a life of ardent independence and total disregard for social conventions. Shortly after Nell's wedding, Sula leaves the bottom for a period of 10 years. She has many affairs and attends college. When she returns to the bottom and to Nell, now a conventional wife and mother, they reconcile briefly. The rest of the town, however, Regard Sula as the very personification of evil for her blatant disregard of social conventions. Their hatred in part rests upon Sula's affairs with the husbands of townspeople, though Hannah did this very thing with much less criticism. The hate is crystallized when the husbands start a rumor that Sula slept with white men, successfully turning the whole town against her, though it is implied at the end that Sula was not hurt by anyone's opinions except Nell's. Ironically, the community's labeling of Sula as evil actually improves their own lives, as her presence in the community gives them the impetus to live harmoniously with one another, as well as treat each other better. For instance, Sula's affairs give the wives a reason to soothe the bruised egos of their husbands, while Sula's lack of family at her age is scorned by all the women and causes them to be better mothers. What confuses the town even more is how Shadrach, who treats everyone poorly, always treats Sula with chivalry. The final nail in the coffin of their friendship is an affair Sula has with Nell's husband, Jude, who subsequently abandons Nell. Just before Sula dies in 1940, they reconcile half-heartedly. With Sula's death, the harmony that had reigned in the town quickly dissolves, as the couples begin bickering again and the women complain about motherhood again. Sula dies alone, and the community doesn't even attend her funeral. Shadrach, whose PTSD has faded enough for loneliness to crawl back in, is the only one saddened by her death. Nell never remarries and instead smothers her children, repeating every one of her mother's mistakes. The bottom slowly dissolves after Sula's death, becoming a different place. Nell visits Eva out of cordiality in 1965 in a home for old people where Eva tells her that she knew about her and Sula drowning Chicken Little. Nell replies that the blame was just on Sula, but later realizes that the girls shared everything back then. Nell says goodbye to Sula at her gravestone, finally realizing that all this time she thought she was missing Jude, when really it was Sula, and cries in grief as she recalls the years spent without her.